Hey college football fans, welcome to episode 51 of Walk It Off with Chappie. Yep, we've completed our first 50, but we're gonna keep going like any steam engine would. So today we're continuing with our preview and our coverage of the FBS Independence. We're gonna look at a team that has been pretty good in the last three seasons anyway as an independent, the Liberty Flames. Now, this will be their last year as an independent. They start Conference USA in 2023, but you look at what Coach Hugh Freeze has done there in those last three years, eight wins, 10 wins, eight wins. So you're looking at a team that has won 26 games with an independent schedule, which is pretty much half and half. And here comes 2022. So will the Liberty Flames stay red hot or will they flame out and kind of regress maybe to the mean a little bit? Well, let's look at their offense. You lose Malik Willis, and everybody's going to point to that. They bring in Charlie Brewer from the transfer portal, who was at Utah for a couple weeks into the regular season and then decided to leave the program, enter into the portal. But let's not forget, he started 39 games at Baylor and was really a star for that Baylor team in his time there. I think that the quarterback job will eventually be won by Caden Salter, who transferred in from Tennessee last year. He was a four-star recruit, um, had some things happen at Tennessee where it just wasn't a good fit for him. So he's at Liberty. He played in five games a year ago, and I think fits more of the Hugh Freeze quarterback mold uh, and is a lot more similar to a Malik Willis type than maybe Charlie Brewer is. And if, if we're looking and we're thinking Hugh Freeze offense, that um, RPO type offense, I think Salter is the better guy to run that than Brewer is. In the backfield, they're very excited about the addition of Day-Day Hunter from Hawaii, guy who averaged 5.7 yards per carry on the ground last year. And then you've also got TJ Green, who was Liberty's second leading rusher a season ago, averaged 5.4 yards per carry. He was another guy who transferred in from Utah a couple seasons ago and gives him a, a good back. He might even be the starter over Hunter. And then don't forget about Shadro Lewis also. He's an elusive player in the open field, good receiver out of the backfield, but he also averaged 5.6 yards per carry when they handed the ball off to him. He's also a dynamic kick returner in the special teams game. Liberty will also be helped by returning four of their top six receivers. And it starts with Demario Douglas, 52 catches, 13 and a half, per reception and six touchdowns a year ago. Also a very good punt returner, took one to the house for a score in 2021. Uh, CJ Daniels, even though he suffered an ACL injury in the spring, the hope is that he'll be back and healthy and kind of pick up where he left off last year. 17 yards per catch and seven touchdowns, which led the Liberty receiving core in terms of receiving touchdowns. And then you bring in transfer Caleb Sneed from Campbell. He was an FCS All-American a season ago. Uh, ironically, that's who Liberty played in their opener last season. So apparently seeing his Campbell Camels get dusted by Liberty's offense when his time was up at Campbell, wants to come over and become a flame. So he joins that group this year. And they also get back CJ Yarbrough, who sat out last season. But in his first two years in Lynchburg, he has averaged over 17 yards per reception. So dynamic playmakers there. They also think that their tight end will uh, have a, a breakout year. And you can expect a lot of points and you can expect good passing offense from a Hugh Freeze directed core. Up front, they do return three starters, uh, Schlittler, Gadlin, and McCaw. They bring in Cam Reddy to fill in at center. He's a transfer from Colorado State, played the last two years out there in Fort Collins. He was at Boston College before that. And they also bring in Nasir Watkins from the transfer portal from Kentucky. So you're looking at five offensive linemen who are either experienced or came out of high school with some pretty good touting. Going to the defensive side. Now this is a defense that was pretty good last year. And by pretty good, I'm really underselling it. They were very good. Big problem is they lose their commander, Scott Simons. He left to be the defensive coordinator under Rhett Lashley on the SMU staff. So Freeze promoted from within, and they're going to have actually 
co-defensive coordinators this year, but listen to these numbers from Liberty's stop squad in 2021. They were top 30 in third down defense, red zone defense, total defense, scoring defense, pass efficiency defense, sacks and tackles for loss. And of all those, they were top 15 in red zone defense, tackles for loss, and total defense. So two pretty important categories when you're looking on that side of the gridiron, total defense and red zone defense, they were among the top 15 best in the nation. Another problem, aside from losing Simons, is they have to replace four of their front six. Two guys on the interior and both linebackers. But the two guys that return, Treshawn Clark and Darrell Johnson at defensive ends, pretty good at getting after the quarterback, even though Johnson kind of tailed off last year. So in 2020, that magical 10-win season where Liberty was a single point away from an undefeated 11-0 regular season, um, Johnson had eight and a half sacks and 11 and a half tackles for loss. Last year he had zero sacks and just six tackles for loss. So if he can regain and get back to his form, that's going to be a good pairing. Kendy Charles played considerably well as a freshman last season. He moves into a starting role at that nose tackle position. And they also got a couple big beefy guys from Auburn in the transfer portal. Uh, Jay Hardy is one of those guys looking to step in and play opposite Charles on that front. They got a, a pretty good Juco linebacker, Mike Smith, who will step in at one of those inside backer positions. Perhaps their defensive MVP is Javon Scruggs, who plays that rover position. So in addition to being a solid tackler and a pretty good pass defender, he had six pass breakups a year ago. He's a general out there, gets guys in position and is aggressive and just displays all the characteristics and traits that you want to have from your defensive leader. Chris Meganson was their lockdown corner, relatively speaking. He had six pass breakups a year ago, 21 tackles. So a decent nucleus to, to revolve around, but there's a lot of inexperience in that secondary and they're going to be tested surely this year. Now. Liberty has won at least eight games in all three of Hugh Freeze's seasons. So speaking of the games, how does the schedule shape out for Liberty to match those eight wins or possibly get even better? Well, let's look at these stats first. So Hugh Freeze is really a night and day game performer at home and on the road. So at Liberty, he's 15 and three at home and only eight and eight on the road. And it's not just at Liberty. So at Ole Miss, prior to when he was at Liberty, they were just, um, or they were 31 and 10 at home. So he performed very well in his home venue, but at Ole Miss, he was just 14 and 15 on the road. So Liberty has just six home games this year, and they've also got six road games. So they're gonna have to get better in the away games in order to continue to trend upward. So let's look at that schedule. Their first four, they start off on the road at Southern Miss at Robert Stadium, a place that they call The Rock where uh, that used to be a tough venue to play in if you were a visitor. Lately, it's kind of tailed off a little bit, but this will be their first year in the Sun Belt Conference and looking to try and emerge themselves as one of the leaders in that new conference. Uh, then. Liberty comes home to take on UAB, a team that they beat on the road last year. And UAB is a very, very good home team, at least within the last seven seasons. So for Liberty to go on the road and beat them last year was unexpected. So the Blazers are coming in with vengeance on their mind, although they're also going to be coming in with a new head coach. Uh, our condolences to Bill Clark um, on his health. Uh, no, nothing, nothing tragic happened, but um, bravo for him to decide to take care of his health and be with family over football in these times. And then they travel to Wake Forest, which again, on the road, especially against Power 5 opposition, Freeze has not figured that out very well yet. And then they're home against Akron. So I see Liberty winning three of those first four games, and I think you can imagine which one they drop. Then the next four, they travel to Old Dominion and Ballard Stadium in, uh, you know, where Old Dominion plays. That's not as easy a place to win at as people might think. So that could be an easy trap game that Liberty could fall into. Then they're on the road against UMass, 
home against FCS foe Gardner Webb, and then home against BYU. Now, BYU is going to be a very good team this year. I think they win nine or more games, so that's certainly not a, an even match coming into Williams Stadium. Uh, I think that BYU has a considerable leg up over Liberty as we see those two teams right now in July. Then there's a bye, and then after the bye, so they play BYU, they have a bye week, and then they have to travel to Fayetteville, Arkansas to take on an Arkansas team that also is going to be pretty good this year. Most likely nine wins or better. Then they're on the road at UConn, home against Virginia Tech, where Hugh Freeze has already beaten the Hokies back in 2020 on the road. So getting Virginia Tech under this new coaching staff under Brent Pry, um, I think that that's going to be a more winnable game than their home match against BYU a couple weeks prior. Uh, but still, kind of a toss-up game as we look at it right now. And then they finish the year at home against New Mexico State, who also is bringing in a new coaching staff, Jerry Kill. But again, that's going to be at the end of November, the final game of the season. So we'll have a better idea of where both of these teams are. So looking at that schedule, I'm calling for a 7-5 and five season for the Liberty Flames going 0-4 against those Power 5 teams that I mentioned. So I see wins against Southern Miss, UAB, and Akron, UMass, Gardner-Webb, UConn, and New Mexico State. So winning all the games they're expected to. And yeah, they might um, spring a slight upset and defeat a BYU team or a Virginia Tech team. I think Virginia Tech is more likely for them to win than BYU, but I could be proven wrong. Um, but I think going to... Wake Forest, especially in week three, Wake Forest is going to have a good team, and Sam Hartman is going to give problems to that um, broken in or that, that still breaking in secondary for Liberty. And then Arkansas, I think, will also create issues for this Liberty team. So again, 7-5, and five, not too bad. Um, and they're getting ready to trans transition into conference play when they join Conference USA next year, where I think that they should be a player right away and one of the leading contenders for a conference championship in the CUSA in 2023. So tell me what you think, Liberty fans, and continue to spread the word and share all the good that you see from my Twitter feed, at Chappie CFB. Also check out the website, cfpcollegefootball.com, where I'll be releasing my official independence uh, preview and picks in order of finish very shortly. I'm Chappie, and this is what I know.